in the bustling, often noisy crypto world, it's uh, it's pretty easy to get caught up chasing the next big meme coin, right? Oh, absolutely. Or whatever project is grabbing all the headlines that week. Exactly. But what if kind of beneath all that surface stuff, there's this quiet, powerful infrastructure layer being built? Mm hmm. Something more foundational. Yeah. Something that could, you know, fundamentally change the whole game. Today, we're taking a deep dive into Flare. The silent giant. Yeah, that's a good way to think of it. Like, it's meticulously wiring the future behind the scenes. Okay. So our mission today is really to unpack the Flare network. Uh, its native token is FLR, but you might sometimes hear it called Spark token, especially from early folks. Right, that was the original name idea. We'll explore what it actually is. It's... um core innovations which are pretty unique and its real world uses now and maybe why it's potentially undervalued exactly why some experts think it might be the most undervalued network of 2025 this deep dive is basically a shortcut for you to get genuinely informed about this project and where's this info coming from good question it's from a whole stack of different sources we've got technical analyses interviews with key people actually building in the crypto space market reports the works Okay, comprehensive. So let's unpack this. We've hinted at this quiet revolution. What is Flare, fundamentally, and why was it even created? Well, at its core, Flare is a layer one blockchain. Okay, so foundational, like yeah. Ethereum or Solana, not built on top of something else. Exactly, but it has a very specific, uh, ambitious goal. The problem it's trying to solve is actually massive. Which is? Most of the big valuable crypto assets out there, think Bitcoin, XRP, Litecoin, Dogecoin, they just weren't built to natively support smart contracts. Right. They're huge stores of value, but kind of locked out of DeFi and that whole programmable world. Precisely. They're like these sleeping giants, holding immense value, but limited in what they can do. Okay, so Flare comes along. Yeah, the way our sources put it, Flare essentially gives superpowers to these sleeping giants. I like that, like how iOS updates give new features to older iPhones. That's a great analogy, yeah. Flare lets these older foundational assets finally jump into the smart contract arena, participate fully. Unlocking new possibilities for them. Sounds simple, but I guess the implications are huge. They really are. And what's truly fascinating here is how Flare pulls this off. It's not just another smart contract platform bolted on. Okay. It was built from the ground up, with interoperability connecting things as its absolute core principle. This is where its unique tech comes in. Let's start with F assets. F assets, right. But think of these as synthetic, smart versions of those non-smart contract tokens. So you'd have FXRP representing XRP or FBTC for Bitcoin on the Flare network. So like a tokenized version, but specifically for Flare. Sort of, but their purpose is the revolutionary part. They let people holding Bitcoin, Doge, Litecoin, XRP use those assets directly in DeFi applications on Flare. Ah, so they can earn yield, interact with protocols. Exactly. Trustlessly, without needing centralized custodians, and crucially, without those risky cross-chain bridges that have caused so many problems. Okay, that's a big deal. Avoiding the bridge hacks. It's fundamental to the design. Imagine Dogecoin triggering rewards in a game or Bitcoin being used to mint stable coins without ever touching Ethereum, or Litecoin as collateral in a Flare lending protocol. That's what F assets enable. So F assets give these sleeping giants a voice, letting their value become programmable. But, you know, people are rightly wary of bridges after all the exploits. How does Flare make sure F assets are secure? What's the mechanism? That's a critical question, and it leads to the other core components working together. First up is the Flare time series Oracle, or FTSO. FTSO. Okay, an Oracle, like Chainlink. Similar function, but different approach. Most chains rely on external Oracle services, which can sometimes be centralized points of failure. Flare built the FTSO directly into its foundation. It's native. Ah, integrated. Yes. It's a decentralized system that securely pulls real-time, high-frequency data like price feeds from many sources and feeds it right into smart contracts on Flare. So developers don't need to bolt on an external Oracle. Correct. It's just there, highly secure and accessible. And the data providers who feed accurate info into the FTSO, they get rewarded with FLR tokens. Okay, so it's incentivized and self-sustaining. Precisely. But maybe the most groundbreaking piece, the real differentiator, is the state connector. State connector. Sounds important. It really is. This protocol lets smart contracts on Flare securely and trustlessly verify proofs from any other blockchain or even from Web2 systems. Wait, any blockchain and Web2, how does that work? Think about it. 
It can verify if a Bitcoin transaction happened, check the state of an Ethereum contract, see an XRP balance change, okay, or even verify off-chain events from a centralized API, like a sports score or weather data, using cryptographic proofs. Wow. So it's not just about blockchains talking to each other. No, it's much bigger. Yeah. Sources describe it as programmable data fusion. Flare acts like a universal verification layer. Programmable data fusion. I like that. It enables things like, say, a DeFi loan triggered by a verifiable real-world event or carbon offset protocols that adjust automatically based on live emissions data pulled from, I don't know, satellites or sensors. That's that's a game changer. Bringing verifiable external data securely on chain. Exactly, it's huge. So if F assets are the new language for those dormant assets and the FTSO gives Flare eyes for real-time data, then the state connector sounds like it gives Flare ears. It can hear and verify events from basically anywhere. That's a perfect way to put it. Eyes and ears for the blockchain. And how does this comprehensive data capability make Flare particularly strong for something like real-world asset tokenization? RWA is obviously a massive trend everyone's talking about. Exactly. The state connector's ability to securely verify external data is absolutely critical for RWAs. You know, imagine a tokenized piece of real estate. Its value needs to react to property assessments, local market data. Right. Stuff happening off-chain. Or... Think about carbon credits tied to verifiable live emissions from a factory, not just a report filed months later. The state connector can ingest and verify that kind of data trustlessly. Flare is built for that kind of granular, real-time verification at scale. Okay, this is where it gets really interesting. We're moving from the cool tech to, like, actual tangible uses. Yeah, the so what factor. Right. One immediate impact seems to be unlocking dormant liquidity. You mentioned Bitcoin, XRP, billions just sitting there. Trillions, potentially, across all those non-smart contract chains. And F assets bring that into the DeFi ecosystem on Flare without needing central parties. That's a massive economic unlock, right? It changes where DeFi liquidity can even come from. Fundamentally re-architecting it, potentially. And beyond finance, you mentioned environmental solutions, that combination of the FTSO and state connector. Yeah, it allows for real-time carbon tracking by securely ingesting that environmental data. So dynamic carbon credit systems that actually respond to verified emissions data, not just static reports. Exactly. Moving beyond opaque reporting to verifiable action. And then there's GameFi. How does that fit in? Well, game developers, maybe even stock prices, to trigger in-game events or rewards. Oh, interesting. Like if a certain team wins, you get an NFT drop in a game. Precisely, that kind of thing. And the infrastructure to do it securely is already there with the state connector and FTSO. Yeah. It's not just theory. And you mentioned bridging Web2 data, too. That seems huge. It is. Accessing and verifying proofs from Web2 sources, livestock prices, shipping routes, social media activity means these can become reliable inputs for on-chain applications. Which opens doors for, what? New mm. financial products? Prediction markets? All of the above. And enterprise systems that can react in real time to real-world logistics or market changes. Wow. And our sources specifically mention Flare being designed for scale when it comes to real-world asset RWA tokenization. Yeah, the estimates for that market are just staggering. $45 trillion, maybe $80 trillion by 2030. It's almost hard to comprehend. It is. And the point is, Flare isn't just another chain trying to catch the RWA wave. It's been building the foundational rails and pipes, the verification infrastructure needed for that massive flow of value and data. Building the plumbing before the flood arrives. That's a good way to think about it. Okay, so if we connect this to the bigger picture, the wider crypto and even traditional finance landscape, Flare seems strategically positioned. Incredibly so, according to the analyses. A huge factor is Ripple's backing. Right, I saw that. Ripple invested in Santo. Yes, Santo is the builder behind Firelight, a major project using Flare Networks. Ripple led a $25 million round. That's not just pocket change. It's a significant vote of confidence from a major player. Confidence in Flare's tech, presumably. Absolutely, in the infrastructure and its potential, especially for institutional DeFi. So what's Firelight's role specifically? Firelight is a staking platform built on Flare. It's designed specifically for financial institutions. Ah, uh, targeting the big players. Exactly. Like VivoPower, they've already committed $100 million in XRP to use Firelight. The idea is they convert their XRP into FXRP on Flare and earn yield through staking. Okay, so activating that dormant institutional XRP. Precisely. And Firelight is expected to launch around August 2025, so quite soon. It's a major catalyst anticipated for the network. That is a huge vote of confidence. 
Now, speaking of XRP, we hear a lot about stablecoins. Ripple's launching RLUSD. What about an XRP-backed stablecoin? Is that happening on Flare? Okay, this is another really groundbreaking piece of news from the sources. Flare's co-founder has confirmed, yes, an XRP-backed stablecoin is already being built on Flare. Wow, XRP-backed. Yeah. Some experts are even suggesting this could become, quote, the hardest money ever known because it's backed by the underlying asset itself. How is that different from Ripple's RLUSD then? Good clarification. RUSD, as you said, is backed by traditional assets cash, US treasuries. This stablecoin on Flare would be directly backed by XRP. Okay, two different approaches. And this XRP-backed one would expand XRP's utility within Flare's DeFi ecosystem even more. Exactly, opens up new frontiers. And one more strategic point. Flare is described as ISO 2022 adjacent. ISO 2022, that's the new global financial messaging standard, right? Replacing yeah. things like SWIFT eventually. That's the one. A much richer standard. Being adjacent means Flare's architecture fits naturally within that framework. So it's ready for future integration with global financial systems. That's the idea. It's built to be compatible with the future rails of finance. It's yep. that modern digital plumbing again. Right. Okay. So bringing it all together, what does this actually mean for you, the listener, and for the FLR token itself? Let's unpack the FLR tokenomics. Sure. So FLR is Flare's native token. It has three main jobs. Okay. First, you use it to pay gas fees for transactions on the network, standard stuff. Second, it's a governance token, so holders get a say in the network's future. And third, it's used to incentivize those FTSO data providers we talked about rewarding them for providing accurate, reliable data, which keeps the Oracle system strong. Got it. Gas, governance, and incentives. What about the supply? Is it inflationary? It has a capped supply, 100 billion FLR total. There is managed inflation through a distribution model that runs for 36 months initially. It's designed for long-term growth and network security, not just short-term pumps. Okay, capped supply, managed distribution. Now, the part everyone asks about, investment outlook and price predictions and let's be mm -hmm. super clear this is just summarizing what various sources are suggesting not financial advice absolutely crystal clear disclaimer needed there right so at the time the sources were compiled flr was trading around what 2.4 cents yeah somewhere around there short term some predictions see maybe minor corrections but then a potential push towards three to five cents in the next few months say july to october 2025 okay modest short-term upside suggested Medium term, looking towards the end of this year or early next, predictions mentioned may be reaching seven to eight cents. Still quite conservative relative to some projects. Right. But then the long term outlooks get more ambitious. Some analyses compare Flare's potential market cap to other big cryptos. Like if it reached Litecoin's market cap or Cardano's. Exactly. Those comparisons put potential prices much higher, obviously depending on overall market conditions. But the really bold predictions tie into that RWA market. The $45, $80 trillion potential. Yeah. Some projections say if Flare captures just 1% of that massive RWA market value flowing through its rails by 2030, the FLR token price, based on its fully diluted supply, could potentially reach. Well, numbers like $4.50 to $8 per token are thrown around. Wow, that's, that's a huge leap from two cents, based purely on capturing a tiny slice of the RWA pie. It is. It's a bold claim tied directly to Flare's tech being built for that RWA opportunity. Some reports even mention a potential 3,900% or 39x gain, possibly taking it towards $1 if that foundational utility really kicks in and gets adopted. Big ifs, but based on the utility argument. Exactly. And the catalysts expected to drive growth are pretty clear that Firelight launch in August 2025 is a big one. Attracting institutional money. Right. Plus, ongoing developer incentives running through 2026 to encourage building on Flare and just general adoption as more projects and institutions start using this infrastructure. Makes sense. Utility drives demand. So for your own investment considerations, again, not advice, several sources point out that Flare is often seen as undervalued. Why undervalued? Because it's not hyped. It's not a meme coin, it's focused on infrastructure. So the typical retail investor looking for quick hype might overlook it. While well, institutions and people focused on underlying tech are paying attention. Precisely, the suggested strategy often mentioned is looking at quality utility coins, especially when they seem cheap based on fundamentals and thinking long-term, like five, 10 years, not day trading. Playing the long game based on the tech. Yeah, and you can also earn yield. You can wrap your flare and delegate it to FTSO providers. Rewards come like every 3.5 days, twice a mm -hmm. week, 
The rate mentioned was about 2 FLR per 100 wrapped FLR delegated. Passive income potential. Plus, for early holders, there have been those monthly FLR token drops, part of the initial distribution, and those are expected to run until February 2026. Okay, ongoing incentives. And as always, the sources stress the importance of self-custody. Using a cold wallet, like a descent, is mentioned specifically. Not your keys, not your crypto. Standard best practice, always worth repeating. So this all kind of raises an important question, doesn't it? Go on. In a market that's so often driven by, you know, speculative hype and narratives that change week to week, how will this kind of sustained real-world utility and deep institutional adoption that Flair seems to be aiming for, how will that ever redefine what success means for a blockchain project? That's a great question. To sum it up, Flair is really positioning itself as this essential foundational plumbing layer for Web3's future. Connecting things that couldn't connect before. <laughs> exactly. Connecting different crypto assets, connecting real-world data to the blockchain. Its focus is clearly on utility, on institutional-grade solutions, not just temporary hype. Building the infrastructure layer. Right. The infrastructure that lots of future applications, from advanced DeFi to that massive RWA tokenization market, might actually depend on. Okay. So, given Flair's really dedicated focus on bringing smart contracts to assets like XRP, and Bitcoin that were dormant in that sense, and its unique power to securely integrate real-world data. Here's something for you to think about. Mm -hmm. How might this fundamental shift towards utility and this deep interconnectedness actually redefine what we even perceive as value in the crypto space? Could the real measure of a project's success eventually move beyond just price speculation? Towards its tangible impact. Yeah, towards its tangible impact on global finance, on data integration, on solving real problems, something to definitely chew on.